Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gamers. So if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. Hey y'all, I'm kind of busy. I've been spending a lot of money this year, uh, especially for my upcoming move. I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get a custom. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna get a custom uh, Christmas animation uh, this year. I'm gonna aim for next year. So I have to make do with my little, uh, my little intros until I get a few new ones. Um, but yeah, anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. Oh Lord, is the sneeze coming on? Okay, sneeze is gone. Alright, let's jump right back in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Let's delve right back into the black zone. What? Huh? I, I, I can't focus. Drain your mind of color. I don't know what that means. He looks momentarily irritated, but then his face softens. I'll use different words. Alex, you must focus only on the task. But, but, but we're nowhere near the rhinestone dish. We... No, that is the whole task. Focus only on the small task in this moment. You are looking for salvage within this building. That is the task. Only this, and nothing more. When your mind wanders, bring it back to the task. Blur all your thoughts. Only the task. I grit my teeth and try to push through the fog of paranoia clouding my mind. Um, yeah, what, uh, what am I looking for? I'm gonna turn that up. Eesh. Use your wit. Anything you deem valuable, you take. What other black runners have stripped this place already? Perhaps, but there is always more. He moves off into another room. Unlike my footsteps, his bare feet are completely silent. Now I'm alone. The walls of the house shield me from the glare of the black zone, but unseen danger could still be lurking anywhere. Focus on the small task in this moment. I start moving around the room. I think it may have been a bedroom at some point. The wooden drawers and cabinets have collapsed into heaps of rotting material, totally unusable. My eyes hover over a wardrobe. I briefly consider opening it, but the prospect of finding something within puts me off. The next room I check is no better. A central table lies collapsed, shattered by some great weight. On the opposite doorway, I spot three jagged marks about chest height, where something has clawed on at the rotting wood. Unnerved, I move over and run my hand over the markings, the damp scars moistening my fingertips. What kind of creature did this? I spot something on a nearby shelf that distracts me. It's a music box. I gingerly take it down and place it on the palm of my hand like I've just rescued an abandoned newborn babe from the wilderness. It's small, no bigger than a tiny matchbox. With trembling fingers, I wind it. I'm amazed to hear that it still works. Mesmerized, my thoughts drift back to the owners of this place. This little box belonged to someone many years ago. Where was I when they died? Trapped? Uh, unconscious inside a pod? Hibernating for hundreds of years whilst everyone else was slaughtered? Why was I saved? What happened to me? I hear something! I almost dropped the music box in my horror. Right next, right next door to the room I came from. Something moved! Loken? I heard it shuffle around again, dragging its feet through the broken glass. No. Earlier, Loken's footsteps were silent. It's not him. Um. I. It followed us! It's coming for me! Scrambling for cover, I crouch behind a shattered cabinet and keep my head low, halting my breathing entirely. I don't dare look. Nothing yet. It's in the room. I, I hear it moving around. I consider running, but I'll see if but it'll see me for sure. Just keep your eyes closed. Eyes closed, sir. And then Alex? Ah <laughs> I jump in shock, then breathe a sigh of relief. Fuck you scared me. You are okay. Hey, really man, I really freaked out. I thought it was him all along. I feel stupid and relieved. I bury my face in my hands and growl. I hate this place. What happens if you confront it? I wait, my heart beating fearfully in my chest, but nothing happens. Petrifying dread freezes me in place. It's the Black Zone. Something chased me inside, or, or no, I, I'm being crazy. It was just the wind. I take a step towards the door where the sound came from. Ominous silence follows. Look, it's Loken. That's all it is. I consider running, but what if it hears me? What if it hears me moving? I take another step. Nothing. It's just looking. Nothing to be scared of. With only one step left, I press myself to the wall and peer. My body tense, my heart racing. It's just looking. But what if it's not? With my teeth clenched, I turn my head and peer around the doorframe slowly. Ah! Okay. <laughs> you found salvage. I did, er, well, not really. It's nothing. Swallowing my fear, I step over to him and hold up the music box. 
Mm. Our chief would not be interested in this. I could trade it for something, though? Yes, take it. I did not find any salvage. We will carry on. I look down at the music box in my hand, rubbing my thumb affectionately over it. I feel sad. This thing is all that's left of the humans that once lived here. They were real and happy. When I die, that's really it. We're all gone. It's only just starting to hit me now. All that's left of us is junk. It's fucking stupid. It's an injustice. Whoever lived here, they didn't deserve to be forgotten. My fist tightens angrily around the music box. I can't let this place drown me. Not like it like it drowned everyone else. Focus on the task. This and nothing more. Fear is still there, but alongside it, there's a yearning to see more. Let's go. Lincoln smiles. I think he understands. The follow me jerk of his head. He moves back across the room and vaults outside again. Exhaling, I pocket the music box and follow. Wordlessly, we return to our steady running pace. The mocking, watchful land pursues us with its leering gaze again. Silently, with tunnel vision focus, I stay at the hound's side and keep pace with him. I'm trying to ignore the pervasive aura of the black zone and focus solely on following him. The forest breaks. We've run into more open. We've more run into more open ground. A range of crooked mountains ahead. Stop! Logan's order startles me so much that I almost trip. I flail my arms madly to keep myself from toppling forwards. What is it? What's out there? His snout is pointed upwards, taking short sniffs of the air. It is clear. We must now ascend the mountain, and we will reach an old Zephyr village, the rhinestone dishes within. My head whips anxiously around me as he speaks, I'm still expecting a lurking horror to pounce from the shadows and eviscerate me. You must keep pace with me. This is now the task. Go! He's off. I'm breaking to him in a controlled run ahead of me. I desperately try to stand by his side, lurching forwards and sprinting until I'm back, by, I'm back beside him. He's no longer holding his speed back. Our joint footsteps stab at the eerie quiet, provoking the emptiness. We begin to sprint up a steep incline with a short wall of sharp rocks on our right. St. Lokan suddenly leaps onto the rock wall, effortlessly climbing from one stone to the other. He ascends the entire thing in three bounds of his mighty stride, whirling around to stare down at me expectantly. Seriously? He's really trying to push me to my limit. Focus on the task, this and nothing more. I try to follow his rear up the rock wall, but I'm much slower. The sharp, the sharp rock digs into my hands, leaving my skin red and tender. When I finally reach the top, Loken has turned around and continued to run before I've even gotten to my feet. Oh, give me a break! He's not even tired! Don't just stare at him. Keep going. He's testing you, remember? An arrogant mountain stands up... An arrogant mountain stands ahead of us, but Loken effortlessly navigates us beneath its imposing presence. The woods have given my way to, peace, to a spiteful cliffs and sharp, fatal heights. How are we supposed to... We climb. You've got to be kidding me! Follow. He sprints towards the cliffs, paying my, dis play paying my disbelief no attention whatsoever. Loken runs through a gorge nestled beneath the sleeping mountain, his mighty strides taking him higher and higher onto haphazard boulders and jagged terrain. Here I see the peak of the husky's athleticism. He handles the difficult ground beautifully, the flow of his motion never, slowly, never slowing or faltering. One second, guys. Okay. He's clearing my sinuses. Eventually, the terrain becomes so jagged that he's half running, half climbing. He effortlessly leaps upon cliffs, vaults up treacherous stone, and ricochets from boulder to boulder, all in smooth, fluid maneuvers. His free running is so fluent, the stones and cliffs seem to part in reverence to him. I've never seen anyone move like that. He's been doing this all his life, remember? This is your first day. All my focus is going is going on keeping pace with the assiduous hound. I'm focused on the task, nothing else. The fear of leering faces and stabbing eyes seems laughable compared to the strain Loken is putting me through. Is this, is this my vigor finally kicking in? I barely remember that I'm still inside the black zone. My efforts to keep pace with Loken reach a dead end where I when I reach the rock wall in the gorge. Water bleeds from the top and falls into a vast, hungry lake below. Zero hesitation, the husky jumps at the sheer vertical cliff and hooks his paws onto it, leaping and bounding upwards like a primate. I gop at his, at his breathtaking ability. Loken makes the perilous climb in only a few moments, leaving me staggered down below. He seriously expects me to do that? There's no way! I'm going to have to cheat! Bite! Get us up there! Scanning for a route. One moment. Got it. Here. There. Follow that path. I'll control your movements for the trickier jumps. Okay, together? Together. Bite's guiding guiding impulses kick me and kick in mid-flight as I run to the cliff, wiring my wiring my mind with precise instructions. 
I leap onto the jagged rock and cling to it. Bite's guidance is faultless. We start to climb. My hand starts to sting as the stones cut into them, but I ignore the pain. Bite keeps my arms and legs moving correctly, whilst I keep my eyes fixed on the route upwards. Just don't look down. Bite knows what he's doing, just don't look down. Together, it doesn't take us much longer than it took Loken. We roll onto our feet as we reach the height of the cliff and land on solid ground. We did it! Keeping my momentum going, I spring back to my feet, continue to bound forwards, barely looking where I'm going. Ah! And my enthusiasm almost runs straight off another sheer drop. Loken's arm jumps out in front of me, blocking my path safely. Stumbling backwards to safety, I rein myself back in and look at Loken. He's perfectly calm, still as a statue, staring at the scenery below us. Look at it. I do so. From here, we have a clear view of all around us. The mountainous land is unobscured, and the full extent of the foreboding landscape is revealed to me. It's no less leering and menacing than before, but a sense of focused tranquility washes over me. The crippling dread is... not gone. I'm still wary, but not paralyzed with fear. It's a nice view. Mm-hmm. Focus on this. And nothing more. Besides me, the hound's tail starts to sway. You are learning. I look out at the vast mountains of Layla. Even in the Black Zone, it's beautiful. There aren't any lashing jaws, no prying eyes, no grasping talons. Just the wind, the cold, the sky, and ourselves. I'll focus on that. There's nothing here to be afraid of right now. Hmm. Your vigor is strong. I feel better? I can think clearly. What happened? Is my vigor attuned now? It is, and it is not. Even as black runners, we must be cautious. The darkness is broad. We may still become lost to it. To run to zones is a meditation. It is one small step, and then another. And then another. Some black runners attempt the larger steps. and may stumble. For this, there are consequences. Even with the risk, we must walk the unknown that others cannot. Why? If we do not, all will be forgotten. Even if the clans believe they want this, they do not. I look back out at the scenery. I don't really understand, but I don't think I'm supposed to. So, uh, demons are definitely real, right? I don't see any. They are real. You will hear them. They are very vocal. Be wary of their tricks. They make sounds to intimidate their prey. As he explains it, I think back to the limb he has on his, in his lodge. Mine dwells on it. I wait for the freakout to come. It doesn't. I'm fine. How do I kill them? You do not. Then how do I escape them? You flee. And not understanding. We are close. Zephyr ruins are over the next hill. The rhinestone dish is just beyond that. You are okay. My brow tenses. I wouldn't say I'm okay, but I'm learning to breathe through the suffocating horror exuded by the black zones. Yeah, let's keep going. Loken nods proudly at me. He gently pats and squeezes my shoulder as he passes. I smile when I feel the warmth of his touch again. It's back. How many demons have you seen? Loken hums thoughtfully under his breath as we stroll next to each other. Phew, I do not look behind me when I run. I wince. Alex, explain your knowledge of them. Huh? Your knowledge. You are the last Zephyr. Right, but what do you want me to explain? You say they are constructs of these a &I intellects. Oh, that. Yeah, artificial intelligence. Just AI for short. And honestly, I thought so at first, but now? I don't know. Explain. An AI is a set of instructions that can solve problems. Really advanced AI might be able to, you know, think, talk, just like bite. I am confused. So remember how we could create a mind the same way we, we might paint a picture? Now imagine I put that mind in a body made of metal. Logan's muzzle scrunches up in distaste. You are talking nonsense. Just hear me out. What if that AI I just created decided to rebel? No, the Zephyr did not create these demons. I won't even entertain the thought. But Loken, in my time, demons were just myths with lots of different iterations. They're not real. I think it just happens to be what you guys decided to call... No! I ponder his stubbornness curiously. Why are you so sure? An A and I intelligence is a mind created, as a picture is painted. Yeah? No painter could create this picture. They would die. I blink at him. But they did die, Loken. Hmm. We go quiet for a moment. Well, even with my theory, I still can't explain how they mess with your head. Do not try. That is the path of the informed. Well, there might be a logical explanation, unless... The thought occurs to me. It's something I've silently pondered for a while. Is magic real here? His face tightens. Magic, like the supernatural. Explain. Like, uh, things being possible that shouldn't be. Natural order being manipulated. You are talking nonsense. I roll my eyes. I guess that's a question for Aeon. Hmm, okay. Thank you, Alex, for your thoughts. It is as I said, you have much to offer. 
Alex, you believe? He trails off. What? It is a fantasy. Tell me. Logan blushes. You believe they can be stopped? What, the demons? I laugh at the absurdity of it. How the hell would I know? I have no idea. Like, none at all. Hmm. What time is it? Okay. The Zephyr Ruins are behind this hill. Oh. Hello there. What the fuck does this look like Chernobyl? This looks like a place in Chernobyl. <laughs> or at least uh, somewhere in either Ukraine or Russia. <laughs> what? My face falls at the sight before me. Logan catches my sudden distress and frowns. You are okay. I... I... Seeing a single broken down home in the woods was one thing. But an entire town? The extent of the cascade is laid out before me. The structures have been strangled by nature and desecrated beyond all recognition. There's a dry stench of decaying concrete and crumbling metal. There's nothing here. It's a tomb. Worse than I could have imagined. We're dead. All of us extinct. You are not okay. Hook and steps over and squeezes my shoulder again to comfort me. No one can even tell me how it happened. It was a long time ago. It's only been three days for me. My people are dead. Look, everything's dead. How? How did this happen? Logan despondently withdraws his paw. Sorry, this is just a lot. I thought, since you have no memory... Logan hesitates uncomfortably. He has no idea how to console me. They are just buildings that contain salvage. Only this and nothing more. Only this, nothing more? That's all we are now? Trinkets and rubble? Something that he says stirs a spark of anger within me. Not at him, but at the Cascade. They didn't deserve to be forgotten. He tilts his head sideways. Hmm. Must be cautious of what it, with what is remembered. There may be consequences. A fist clenches. Nobody even wants to remember us. They're too scared. How the hell did this happen, Logan? It's not fair. I want answers, not just for me, but for, for everyone. Logan gives me a sideways glance. It seems to narrow very slightly. Come, we must complete this task to earn the support of the Autumn Monks. We have time to search for salvage, too. Together we trek down the hill and into the ruined Zephyr town. A sense of abandoned melancholy lingers. Loken and I tread through tightly packed factories, all of it smothered by ruin. The town is a skeleton. Walls are smashed in and out. Roads are cracked beyond traversal. Rust and rot have crept around every neglected building and post. We move side by side in pensive silence. Our footsteps crunch on the crumbling cobblestone. The wind sings a haunting tune. Logan seems tuned into his surroundings, his ears flicking and his eyes sharp. You are recognizing things. Somberly, I shake my head. Bite can probably tell us... No! I fix him with a weary glare. He can scan things, otherwise we'll never know. He will lie! I shake my head, frustrated. How can I get him to trust someone he can't see, hear, or understand? My gaze goes scoured at tallest structure, somehow still standing after the cascade. What can you see, Bite? A boring mutt with a shitty attitude. Brilliant. Now focus. Tell me what happened here. Alright guys and gals, I'm gonna pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye